fantastic. And um, David, I, I think culture is always such a critical aspect for any executive leader when they are either joining an organization and, and looking to um, yeah. propel that business forward or whether they're growing that ground up and there's a team of 10, they're growing their C-suite unit and, and looking to expand. How do you foster the most successful culture from your experience um, in different organizations? Shaq, yeah, first of all, I'll say I, I do think culture trumps strategy. This is a phrase gets used a lot by leaders. I, I learned it uh, actually from Alex Gorski when I was you know, at Janssen and then had the opportunity to work with Alex again, uh, reported to him at Novartis too. And, and he would say this all the time, and I completely agree. And I was very fortunate to be part of some great cultures. You know, uh, you know, way back at Janssen when I started, we were a couple hundred people, and I look at what Janssen is today, it's just amazing. Uh, to see the growth there, but we were like a little biotech company within uh, J and J at that time, and the culture is what allowed us to be really successful, and uh, you know, launch drugs like Risperdal and drugs like uh, Propulsid and Asafex and so on. Uh, just a great opportunity, and the culture drove all that. It was a culture where we could do anything. We didn't have any limits, you know, at least in our own minds, we didn't have any limits which is great. So I, I do believe that the culture is really important. And, and it starts at the top, Shaq. It, it's the tone of the top. It's the culture, the innovative culture, the patient-focused culture, the high ethics and integrity culture, the diversity culture. All that begins at the top with the CEO. And they just can't be words. They have to be actions. And then the executive team you know, has to be enrolled and engaged in that culture. And then that will, you know, help, you know, cascade throughout the organization. I've been part of, you know, at Ibsen, we had to do a major cultural transformation. It, it was significant and it was leadership changes. It was cultural changes, ex becoming externally focused, more patient focused, more growth oriented. And that, that was a pretty systemic cultural change for us. And, um, and, and it, it is a journey. It doesn't happen with just one, two, or three-day off-site. It's something you've got to work on each and every day. Um, I've actually had a couple groups I've worked with, and one in particular I've worked with over time, you know, going back to when I was at Novartis Canada, and I you know, had this organization legacy you know, work with me over time. And, um, and, and they know me. They know how to build high-performing leadership teams, how to create a bold promise, how to work together as a team to create those principles as a team. So it takes work and, and it's the leader, but one doesn't have to be the CEO to create a great culture. You know, whatever unit you're in, a business unit, a function you lead, and you don't always have to be the leader to make those cultural changes as well, is, you know, be the leader you want others to be. And, but I, I do believe that the culture really drives it. And when it's not there and you, when you have those folks on the team, <clears throat> that are culture killers, it needs to be addressed. And if, if it can't be, uh, if it can't be, you know, altered, then it needs to be eliminated. Um, and, and that's happened uh, before, you know, with, with folks on my teams that, uh, you know, this is the culture, this is how we're going to work together as a team. And, um, and hopefully folks are enrolled and engaged in that. And if they're not, and it's okay, you know, maybe that's not the, type of team they want to be part of, and they want to be part of another team, and that's okay. And they deselect themselves, or we deselect them uh, uh, to make our organization better. But the culture is something that has to be protected each and every day. Uh, I firmly believe this, and it does begin with the patient. If folks aren't waking up every day and going to work, you know, whether that's remote work or going to visit a customer, going to a lab, whatever it may be, <clears throat> it's all about the patient. That's what we exist for. If our medicines don't make patients better, why are we here? It all begins there. But culture wins and culture loses. There's a, uh, you know, I actually was just speaking with somebody yesterday, a CEO that's having a real challenge with their culture and it, it's crumbling. It, it, it's sad to listen to them and it's crumbling. And a lot of it, some of it's macro, but some of it's micro. And it's uh, and if, if it's not turned around, they're they're, they're probably not going to be around much longer as an entity. Wow, um, key points there, and I think for anybody who's listening, um, something that I think folks work in and on day in day out uh, when you're growing teams or looking to replace and 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 try and lead from the front.